Social Security is the most important retirement asset most people have, according to Mark Miller, author of The Hard Times Guide to Retirement Security. And while we often hear that the program is on the verge of crisis, he says that's not true. Hi, Mark. Thanks for Jill, coming here. Thanks for having me. Mark, every time you read a newspaper, you turn on the TV, we hear Social Security is going broke. Yes. Is it? No, it's not. Uh, you know, the, what happened this year is that the program for the first time took in less cash than it's paying out on a current year basis. But that's not a shock. The actuaries who run the program have known for a long time that was coming. It happened a little earlier, a couple years earlier than expected because of the recession, which had an impact on the amount of payroll taxes being collected and so forth. Um, but Social Security has a two and a half trillion dollar surplus sitting in something called the Social Security Trust Fund, which has been building up since the early 80s because we knew these boomer retirements were coming down the path. That's not a shock either. So uh, that surplus is actually going to be growing over the next uh, 10 to 15 years to about three and a half trillion. Then it starts heading down as boomer retirements really get into fast gear. And it would be depleted around 2035 if we don't make any other fixes to the long-term health of Social Security. 2035, just when I'm supposed to get benefits, <laughs> coincidentally. Right. But I think we are going to make some, some good changes to it. It's a gigantic program, and we can make some very gentle, modest tweaks to it, if we're sensible about this, that would keep it going indefinitely on a very solvent basis. Although I hear from young people under 35, they basically all have the same opinion. Right. I'm not counting on Social Security. I'm not going to see a dime of it. Right. What do you think about that? Well, I think that? this is starting to be a self-fulfilling prophecy that the headlines are, as you started off with, you know, that Social Security is in big trouble. So people have been convinced it's not going to be there for me. Now, as I said, even if we do nothing to uh, fix the system, come 2035, there would be enough to pay out three quarters of benefits to new beneficiaries. But we shouldn't allow that to happen. We need to do things so that everybody's made whole on 100 cents on the dollar. And the good news is there are ways to do that without an exceeding amount of pain. Do you think that it's more important to continue raising the age or to reduce benefits in the future? Even though I believe people should work longer if possible, that's different to me than raising the retirement age for this reason. Uh, working longer is not a solution for everyone. Some people won't be able to either because they won't be able to find work or they'll have health problems. And for people who do physically demanding labor, it's really not appropriate to say to somebody who's been working hard physically, you, you know, keep doing it till 70. That's just not going right, to get Right, you're not going to have a general contractor right. up on a roof at 75. So for those folks, a raise in the, another big raise in the uh, retirement age just is just a big cut in benefits because of the way that uh, the benefits are structured. So what do you think are the three best ways to shore up the system to sort of for the generation beyond the baby boomers? I think we're going to need some revenue increases. Those can be some tax increases. And there are a number of different ideas out there that make a lot of sense. Surveys show that the American public is very supportive of doing things to keep Social Security solid. An AARP survey showed that more than half would support paying in more if they knew it would keep Social Security solvent down the road. I think that's kind of interesting given the kind of world we live in vis-a-vis -vis taxes and how yeah, people think about taxes. Amazing that people would actually choose yeah. to pay more. I think people understand the value of Social Security and understand its importance. Obviously, you can't just rely on Social Security for most people. And right. if you are going to retire at 65 or 70, you could live for 25 more years. Right. So what are those people supposed to do? Well, a big theme in my book is the theme of working longer. Working even a few additional years beyond what you might have planned can make a big, big difference in retirement security. Now, I, I got to say that's easier said than done. Yeah, I was going to say you could either you could, right, you could either not get a job, or you could be sick, or something bad right. happens. So, so I don't mean to account? suggest this is an easy solution, but it's a suggested approach that people ought to be thinking about because those few additional years make a big difference in this way. A, you can wait till you're closer or beyond your full retirement age for Social Security. You get many more additional dollars annually as a result. Um, there are additional years that hopefully you're contributing to a 401k. There are additional years that you're not drawing down those funds and using them. And there are additional years that those dollars can be at work in your portfolio, hopefully continuing to recover from the downturn. So all those things together can have this huge impact on retirement income uh, once you do get around to retiring. Okay. That's what I would say for older workers. And the financial crisis wiped out a lot of retirement savings, you know, 201Ks instead of 401Ks. Right. So 
just before you leave, just how can people get back on track? I mean, they really have taken tremendous losses. Right. Well, I do think that it's time to reevaluate the spending side, and I write about this pretty frequently. It's, you know, that, that, that idea of the rule of thumb that I just need to go out and replace 80 to 100 percent of what I was making. We need to reevaluate, re make a plan, and look at, you know, are there ways I can economize with that plan? Because for a lot of people, they're not going to be able to get back to 100 percent of where they were. So I think that that's important. Another thing I'm very concerned about with younger retirement investors is there's a lot of evidence that young people have been really spooked so badly by the crash that they're just staying out of stocks entirely. And so we're talking about people in their 20s with you know, almost no money in the market, which, as, as you know, is, that's going to be a prescription for failure down the road. You've got to, have, you've got to participate in the market to some extent. And you know, a lot of young folks are even uh, afraid to even have, say, half of their, their portfolio yeah. in stocks where you know, that's not a terribly aggressive position to be in. So we got to look out for ourselves. we got to make a plan. We may not want to rely only on Social Security. Spend less, save more, be a little more aggressive in our portfolios. Yeah. And that will be the key to retirement. I, I think that's the path. You know, and I don't think it's, a, it's not a, a magic bullet set of solutions, but this is tough times. And so we have to be realistic, and, and we're going to have to work hard with some of these things. Hard work. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Very American concept, though. Yeah, that's true. Thanks so much for joining Thank us. You, and thanks for watching.